The opinions expressed in this program reflect only those of the participants and are not necessarily those of the sponsors, management, or staff of WTBQ Radio or FST Broadcasting Corporation. WTBQ. Everyone. And it is beautiful out there in Orange County in New York and New Jersey. And really happy to have with me today, Samara Enders. And uh, she has a guest with her she's going to introduce uh, because I forgot to take the name with me, Samara. <laughs> so today we I'm not have doing well us, today. <laughs> today we have Megan Dwyer. She is Greystone's Assistant Director of Community Services. Yeah. And so first want to say congratulations to Samara and her husband. They have a beautiful baby. And we're Thank all excited about that because you can't bring enough beautiful souls into this place, uh, <laughs> Thank especially you so much. with what you do. So, yeah, why don't you start off because I've been about five minutes since you've been on the air and tell everybody before you start speaking with Megan a little bit about Greystone and what you do. Sure. So at Greystone, we provide support to adults, families and children that live with autism and other intellectual and developmental disabilities. We have 17 different homes where individuals live and we have direct support professionals that care for them 24-7, seven days a week, 24 hours a day. And to them, we are their family. We take care of them. We make sure that they have everything that they need to live happy and healthy lives and to meet their individual goals. And we also have different day programs throughout Orange, Dutchess, and Ulster County. And that is where um, Megan comes in with community services, too. So I'll let Megan talk a little bit about um, what community services does. But first, Megan, how long have you been with Greystone and in this field? How did you get into this? So I've actually been in human services for about 17 years now, and I've been with Greystone a little over 10 years um, in various positions. I started out as a behavior specialist and then... I went into the role of community services and have fell in love with it. Wow. That's really great. And what does community services do at Greystone? So we have a variety of various programs that we provide, um, and it's working with families and individuals that have eligibility through the Office of People with Developmental Disabilities. That is how they get eligibility for the various programs that we provide. And some of those programs I oversee are community habilitation, which is a goal-based service, as well as re- at-home respite services. So that service is providing the caregivers of the person that has a developmental disability or intellectual disability a much-needed break, um, as well as I oversee our in-home behavior therapy program for families that live in the Taconic region, as well as I also oversee our children's waiver program. What is an example of respite? Who could use that program? So respite allows family members a break from the sometimes overwhelming demands of caring for a person with a disability, and it provides a staff support in the person's home. So we would find a staff for them that would be able to work with them and provide them a much-needed break. So an example of that that we've done is, you know, if mom and dad have to go to um, one of their other children's soccer games or other various commitments that they have, they'll be able to have a staff that is trustworthy, knowledgeable to be able to care for their loved one at home while they be able to go and tend to other um, aspects of their life. Oh, that sounds like super important that a lot of families could use that type of program. It's one of our, you know, it's a very important service because it's a much needed service that we we provide. And what about um, community habilitation and children's waivers? What are those programs? So community habilitation provides the opportunity for the person to acquire and improve on skills that they need in that is person centered. So it depends on what the person wants to work on, the areas that they want to improve upon. So this provides them with a one to one opportunity to really get to know the staff that gets to do the fun things that they like to do, like community integration, finding hobbies that they love to be able to do. Right now is a beautiful time because it's the fall. There's so many activities that they that we have our staff doing with um, some of their people that they support, like pumpkin picking, apple picking, you know, pumpkin carving, all those fun things. 
you know, so those are some examples of what we do in the community. Other examples is helping with socialization and communication skills, um, personal safety, problem solving skills. Each identified goal is based on what the person needs and wants um, that they want to be able to work on individually. And it's so great now, especially in the fall, doing all of these activities. There's so many different places where we live in the Hudson Valley to go out and go apple picking or pumpkin picking. So it's great that um, the people we support get to also take part in those activities. Absolutely. This is like the, one of my favorite times of year, you know, because of the various community opportunities that we have, you know, by utilizing our local community. And it helps the person to be able to develop and further work on those skills in the community. Absolutely. What's, what is some important um, information for the community you think um, to know about what Greystone does? I think the best is that, you know, for especially those families that, you know, have someone that is newly diagnosed that we are here to help, even though, you know, we won't help with the eligibility, but we'll point them in the right direction. Um, you know, we're, losing, yeah. we're losing her voice here. I don't know if you can hear it, Samara. Uh, but I think we've lost Megan. Oh, no, I'm, can you hear me okay? Yeah, you're, I, I'm just, I, I mean, I don't like to do this on the radio, but you're, are you on the phone that comes bundled with cable? No, I'm actually, I took it off of it. Okay, because we're getting a very long trebling in your voice when you talk, so we're missing sometimes all of the sentence or part of it. I don't know why that's happening, because that normally only happens with phones that are attached to cables. They haven't figured that out. So that's strange for it to be trebling now. Because I can, it hear, might, yeah, it might also be because I have a little bit of a cold, so I don't know if that no, is impacting no, anything. No, okay. no, that's not a, <laughs> no, that wouldn't be it. <laughs> All right, no, we've had this problem prior, and so we lost a little bit about what you just said. So maybe just repeat it for the listening audience. Sure, absolutely. What would what part um, was it more about in terms of information for the community to yes. know about Greystone? Correct. Yes. Sure. So. It's, the biggest thing is that we're just here to help. We work as a collaboration with the person's family, with the care manager who oversees the person's services. We always want to make sure that, you know, community people know that we're here to help them. Um, we're here to help the families be able to find additional resources that they need and that they're able to contact us, even if it's just help us pointing them in the, in the right direction. That's super interesting, and I'm really glad that we're able to help people in community with with that. And how would somebody, if they were interested in working with individuals with developmental disabilities or autism, get into this field? The biggest thing is when, we, when we're looking for a staff or even someone that works in our direct support professional um, in our group home, we're looking for someone that wants to make a difference. You know, what better way to make a difference, especially when providing either respite services with us or community habilitation that you get to have that one-to-one -one and really get to know that person and really make a difference in that person's life. Um, so we're always looking for people that are looking to be able to make a difference. They don't necessarily have to have the work experience. Of course, that's always a benefit for working with someone with uh, development or intellectual disability. But we're just looking for someone that wants to make the difference. Um, and we have lots of job openings that are available on our website if they want to look for opportunities or on our Greystone website. And that is graystoneprograms.org, and that's graystone with an E, G-R-E-Y. And Megan, how long, what is your favorite part about what you do? There's a lot of favorite parts. I think my favorite part is working with the families and the people we support. Seeing the people be able to make some type of difference, whether it's, you know, watching the staff make a difference of the person that they're supporting, whether it's them achieving a goal for the first time. You know, we had someone that was able to get their learner's permit that has been working on that for so long, and that was something that their staff was, be, was able to achieve for them by just making visual aids of the different road signs. That was something that they were struggling with, and they were able to get their learner's permit. Um, the other part that I, it's amazing. And the other part that I love is speaking with the families, especially that are new to the services, because it's such a daunting world to come into you know sometimes you don't know what to do so sometimes sometimes that's really stressful and it's really sometimes difficult to navigate the system so i love being able to you know just talk with a family and even just pointing them in the right direction even if they choose to go with another agency with me just having that conversation 
is something that I absolutely love as well. All right, I'm going to interrupt you now because we've got to take a break. We want to hear a little bit more about Greystone, and we will during this commercial break. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Greystone Programs is a nonprofit human services agency that provides essential services to more than 600 children, adults, and families living with autism and other developmental disabilities. Greystone Programs also provides residential support in a community environment with 17 homes in the Mid-Hudson Valley area. Greystone Programs offers exceptional care and support through a variety of programs and services. To get involved or for more information, visit greystoneprograms.org. This is attorney Bob Kruhulik of the law firm Beatty and Kruhulik, the lawyer guy. Tune in every Tuesday at 12 noon for the latest legal advice and tips. We're taking calls and giving answers to all your legal questions. That's every Tuesday at 12 noon on Radio Worth Listening To. WTBQ. And we are back on the Nonprofit Notebook with Greystone Programs with Samara and Megan. You know, Samara, we're talking a lot with Megan and all the incredible work she does. Tell them a little bit about what you do there. Sure. So I am the Director of Philanthropy with Greystone, and I am in the Advancement Department. And in this department, what we do is we raise funds for the individuals that we support um, through different programs, fundraisers, and online um, marketing. And what we do is we actually have a online auction coming up in oh. a couple of weeks, November 1st to 11th. We what, are going um, what, virtu- are, see, what are some of the items you're auctioning? Sure. So we are, we're going virtual with the online auction, and we are going to have some vacation packages that people are going to be able to bid on, whether it's to the Outer Banks or to Barbados or Panama. We have some fun um, items like that. We also have a bunch of fun wine packages and spirits. And then just some other activities that you're able to bid on. And all of the proceeds are going to be benefiting one of our IRAs in Salt Point. And what we're going to be doing with that is we're going to be renovating that home and making it more accessible for the men that live there. Oh, that's wonderful. Now, can uh, WTBQ throw something in there? We would love that. All right. So how about a guest spot on the number one drive time morning show, which is a $500 value? Uh, so we, be somebody who owns a business, be great publicity for them, and uh, a really great experience. It's I always say it's the most... Definitely. The most, Thank you so much. Yeah, the most fun you can have with your clothes on is going to be on the morning show. <laughs> 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 so it's really... It's, it's uns- a good tagline. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right? I made that up. I'll take I'll take it for that. <laughs> but it is. It's great, and you have we have great co-hosts, and it's a great way to get out the publicity for whatever business or service that that person who wins uh, bids on. And I'll send you... Uh, a certificate to uh, to whoever wants to bid on it. Thank you. We really appreciate yeah, that. Our pleasure. Believe me. I think that's, first of all, it's so needed. And the fact is that when people donate things like this, they can take a, de- a tax deduction. And on top of that, you know, how rewarded you are knowing that you're helping to build a place to help uh, people in need. Uh, it's just Absolutely. a fantastic You're making program. an impact. Yep, exactly. And, and you're it, also getting something from it, which... Um, is wonderful too, but it's really going to just be helping the men at Salt Point and giving them more accessibility to their home because we ha- our homes are up to the way that we want to live and we want to make sure that they are living the way that they want to be and living And, you know, as well. also keep in mind the parents of these young people and m- middle-aged, whatever they may be, they, their whole feeling is, and you know a close friend of mine is Deb Major who headed up Xylophone, and her whole thing in her whole life was, can my boys, you know, live independently? I'm not going to be here forever. And having those homes gives them that kind of hope. That they, Absolutely. They, Absolutely. And that's part of why we're here as well. Right. It's so important. I think people need to understand, I mean, uh, the type of work that you do and the availability that you have of people to help them is just fantastic. Definitely. I do want to just touch on some of the career opportunities that we have with Greystone because there are so many and you don't need so much experience to um, join as well. So I'm going to let Megan 
talk a little bit about um, what we are looking for and what opportunities we have. Yeah, as Samara said, we have lots of career opportunities for anyone. Um, and again, like she said, is that you don't have to have the work experience. We have staff that have the lived experience, staff that just want to make a difference. This is going to be the career path for you. So we have direct support professional um, availabilities in our group home. So that's working with a team and being able to help the people that we support that live in our group homes. And we have various shifts available and we have, you know, like Samara said, we have 17 group homes and we're definitely in need of, of staffing. You know, COVID was not kind to the direct support professional careers, um, you know, as well as it did with anyone else. But we have opportunities for career advancement as well within our agency. So it's not just being a direct support professional. We have career ladders built in for them as well, as well as other opportunities that they can be able to, you know, earn as they advance in their career. We also have those that want to make a difference with our community rehabilitation. So that is a part-time position that, you know, we, I have full-time staff that have full-time jobs and they just want to be able to give back. And what better, better way to give back than working one-on-one -on -one with someone in the community and getting to do the fun things, you know. So we have various availability around Orange County and then through the Taconic region as well. That's an opportunity for them, um, as well as opportunities in our day programs. Um, so all these job availabilities that and different positions are available on our website in our careers and employment um, on graystoneprograms.org. And do you have, uh, I'm sorry, do you have a volunteer program as well, like people who don't want to really work, work, but they want to be helpful in some way? We, we've always taken volunteers. We've also done internships. Um, you know, that would be depending on what the volunteer site would be. I think Samara can probably maybe talk a little bit about that as well. Definitely. So we, we do have different, um, like, group volunteer opportunities available. So whether it's beautification projects or... Mm. Um, doing peer-to-peer -peer fundraising, that type of um, volunteer work is always greatly appreciated. Yeah, I mean, similar to what you do when you uh, jump out of a plane, which I... <laughs> Absolutely. <Yes. laughs> I'm surprised you're not doing the polar plunge as well. That's an idea, isn't it? Oh, no, that I should not idea. have said that. <laughs> They do maybe it. We'll, maybe we would get you to do that. If yeah, you don't want to I'll be happy to. Plane. I'll be happy to film it. Maybe you want to <laughs> jump out of a plane into the water. <laughs> so, oh my goodness! Oh my goodness! <laughs> Listen, that polar plunge in Greenwood Lake with nonprofits is a big thing. By the way, they they have a big turnout for that every year. So that could be something to think about. Definitely is now. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I know that people are doing. It. Well, they say it's supposed to be healthy for you. I don't know. I think I'll stick to vegetables. <laughs> yeah, that, sound, that sounds good to me, too. Yeah, right. So how many positions do you actually have available uh, if people want to apply? We have a li I mean, honestly, we have, you know, endless opportunities, and especially in the direct support professional career path. Um, again, it's, you know, with COVID took a toll on our, you know, and we always need the assistance. So we have plenty of opportunities in, in our group homes as well as um, community. And in different locations as well. Like yeah. we said, we have homes and programs in Dutchess, Ulster, and Orange County. So there's, we would work with you on the location of where you would. Now, do you have people in the homes 24-7? Like, do you have three eight-hour shifts of whoever, I don't know if you call it a house manager or whatever, you know, stays there to help out? Yes. So we have various opportunities. And some even houses have broken up shifts, but it depends, you know, but typically they are the three shifts. You know, you have the first shift, um, second shift, which is usually like the, the evening, like 3 to 11 kind of a thing, as well as our overnight. Right. And, you know, and I, just for people, you know, I only know about this because of Deb Major, but uh, there's alarm systems in these homes to be careful to make sure nobody just slips out accidentally. Yes. So just, yes. I mean, everything, because we have to always maintain the health and safety of the individuals that we support, you know, so they're, you know, we have the fire alarms to, you know, everything to be able to keep them safe and the staff safe. Yeah, that's very important because one of the things as a parent just, you know, of typical kids, you know, when they do a sleepover, even in general, you want to know safety is the key thing. Oh, absolutely. And we have the great thing about that is that we also have the regulations that we have to abide by with OPWDD. So they have to do their regulation checks on us to make sure that we're also abiding by what we need to, but we always ensure the health and safety of the people we support first and foremost. And how many people are normally in one of the houses? 
it all varies in terms of staffing. It all depends on the individual needs of that house. Um, so some houses we have may have, depending on the shift, you know, two staff on. So it, everything is always, it varies in terms of that specific house and the needs of the people that live there. Now, do they have like, is it like an apartment that has a kitchen, a bathroom and a bedroom? Or do they eat in the room? Or how does that work? So we actually so it, it, it's a, a full home. It would be a yeah. home like yours or mine. Um, we do have a couple of apartments like that where people do live more independently, um, and we still have staff that support them. But it's really, it's it's a, a home. regular home. Yep. Oh, so people they eat at the dining room table with yep. their other housemates. They cook their meals. So it's like a home that has a lot of different bedrooms, and then they have a main dining room and a main kitchen. Yes. Oh, wonderful. yes. Just like everyone, just like the homes that we have. So in the living that. room, we right. have a, a television. That's great because games. it lets they them have everything. It lets them socialize with other people as well, so they're not secluded or you know all alone. That's a great idea. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely, and that's part of our day programs too. So a lot of the people in these homes, they get to go out during the day and participate in. Um, different activities like Megan was talking about. And do some of them have jobs as well? Yes. Yes. And so how do they get back and forth to their jobs? Um, we have we have vehicles, and our staff will help them get back and forth. And what about applying for a job? How does that work? Do you have, like when you know someone is capable of handling certain types of jobs, how do you get them an interview, and how do they interview? So the great part with Office of People with Development of Disabilities is that they actually have programs that um, help for job readiness, that it's either pre-vocational skills and working on those skills, as well as supportive employment. So there are services that are available to be able to assist them to be able to be successful in having a job and maintaining a job and learning the job readiness skills of interviewing and all the aspects that come along with it. So there are services that they would be able to have that will be able to assist them further in that as well. Yeah, we actually have a program coming up right after yours called Bridges, and that is what they do there at SUNY. They uh, teach young people how to go on job interviews and, you know, what they should put together. They practice. I mean, it's really a phenomenal program. Uh, be an interesting, Much needed. Yeah, much needed and very well done. In fact, the young lady who's going to be coming on is our guest. We call her the mayor. Uh, she, <laughs> uh, she, gra- she just graduated from there recently and got a job. So, you know, there it is. I mean, it's a wonderful program and specifically about what you're discussing. So we Yeah, ha- I think it sounds similar. Yeah. So uh, we have about a minute or so left. So you want to do a little wrap up of how people can reach you and what they can look for there or how they would send uh, a resume in, what your website is, et cetera? Absolutely. So if you are interested in learning more about our programs or applying for Um, one of our career opportunities, you can visit our website, graystoneprograms.org. That's G-R-E-Y, programs.org. And like we were talking about, we do have an online auction coming up that all of the proceeds are going to be benefiting um, the men that live at our Salt Point IRA to add greater accessibility to their home. And we are looking forward to it. And we thank you, Taylor, for your generous donation as well to the auction. My pleasure. Believe me. Anything I can do to help uh, would be an honor for us. I think the, you thank know, you. one of the things, and especially at this time of the year, we're doing a Toys for Military Tot Drive, which, by the way, stays local. Uh, and, you know, people, you know, they always say it's better to give than receive. There's no comparison. When the, the, the feeling that you get... Uh, from giving there's no nothing that can top that and seeing the difference in people and you know understanding that autism is not something to run away from it's a thing to be uh, applauded because what you learn from people with autism is nothing short of miraculous really absolutely and any amount that somebody can um, donate or give you're making such a big impact on somebody. Huge difference. Life. Well, thank you so much, Samara. I can't wait to see you again. I'm so glad about every all the good things that have come to you, and <laughs> thank uh, you. and for Greystone Programs. Make sure you Absolutely. reach out to them. Uh, make it a good week, and I'll talk to you soon. Thanks so much. Thank you thank so much. You. All right. Bye bye now. Bye. Okay. So stay tuned for Bridges, and we'll be back after a few short words from our sponsors. Mm-hmm. 